In this video, I'm going to cover how to draw genetic diagrams to determine inheritance patterns. I'm talking about diagrams like this one, like this one, and I realize they can be really quite intimidating when you first come across them, and that's because there's quite a lot of background knowledge you need before you can start putting the pieces together. After that, once you understand the fundamentals, they really do become quite simple. In order to understand the practice questions I'm going to do, you have to understand what a gene is, you have to know that we can inherit more than one version of it, and these different versions can be dominant or recessive. If any of that's unfamiliar to you, you'll need to go back over, look at the previous video which is linked in the description. There's quite a lot of vocabulary that comes out in these sorts of questions, but I'll get into that as we come across it. All right, so the first question, cystic fibrosis is a genetic disease coded for by a recessive allele. Complete the genetic diagram below to determine the probability that the child of parents with genotypes big F, small f and small f, small f suffers from cystic fibrosis. And there's a lot there to break down. So let's get started with what is the question looking for? Determine the probability the child suffers from cystic fibrosis. That's what we're coming to, and that's what's gonna be here in our final answer. So what else do we have within the question? So cystic fibrosis is coded for by a recessive allele. Now then we should know that we can have two different versions uh, of, in this case, we have two different versions of the gene. And we can have the alleles big F and small f. We're using F because that's presented in the question. We could use any letter we want if it wasn't given to us. If it's recessive, it means that it's this lowercase one that results in a person suffering from cystic fibrosis if that allele is expressed. We know that because, well, they've said it's recessive and we always represent the recessive allele with the lowercase letter. The uppercase letter represents a person that does not suffer from cystic fibrosis. We'll use the word normal, does not suffer. Now then we've got two parents with genotypes, big F, small f, small f, small f. Now genotype is just a word that refers to the genetic makeup of an organism. So there are two alleles for this particular gene. Uh, one of the parents has big F, small f. Those are the two alleles that they have for that gene. That's their genetic makeup. That is their genotype. Now let's get started with the question. We can write in the parent genotypes. It's already given to us in the question. And this always helps us clarify the direction we're going if we sort of start right at the start. Now next we've got to put in the gametes. Now gametes refers to the reproductive cells. So the egg cells and the sperm cells. Let's say Maybe this is the mother, this is the father. It actually doesn't really matter and it doesn't give us that information in the question, so we don't know, um, but it might help clarify our understanding as we go through. So this parent, the mother, for example, can provide egg cells that either have the allele uppercase F or the recessive allele lowercase F because the mother has both versions of that gene and so her gametes will be one or the other. Remember that uh, parents only pass on one version each to their offspring. The father can pass on the lowercase f. A sperm cell could be lowercase f or it could be lowercase f. So there's a 50-50 chance that the mother could pass on big F, small f. There's a 50-50 chance the father could pass on small f, small f, but they're both the same. So it's a 100% chance that the father will pass on the small f allele. Now let's look at what happens or what might happen through inheritance in the offspring. It's possible that this particular egg cell might get fertilized by this particular sperm cell. The offspring would be big F, small f, if that were to happen. It's also possible that this egg cell could be fertilized by this sperm cell. That's a separate possibility, but it provides the same result, big F, small f. It's possible that this egg cell could be fertilized by this sperm cell, small f, small f. And it's also possible that this egg cell could be fertilized by this sperm cell. Again, small f, small f. So these are all of the different possible genotypes of the offspring.
Let's look at what genotypes mean before we go any further. All possible genotypes here, not specific to this cross, all of the possible genotypes that could exist in a human being are big F, big F, big F, small f. We could arguably write small f, big F, but that's exactly the same thing as big F, small f. It doesn't matter which order we write them in. And the other possibility is small f, small f. So there are three possible, um, three possible genotypes that a human could have for this particular trait. Big F, big F, well, it's pretty obvious what, uh, it's pretty obvious how that would be expressed. Big F is the normal allele. Again, a big F, another one for the normal, um, the normal trait. And so an individual that has this particular genotype would not suffer from cystic fibrosis. Let's skip down here. We know that the lowercase, um, the, the lowercase letter represents the allele which calls for suffering from the condition. If an individual is born only with those particular alleles, of course, unfortunately, that person would suffer from cystic fibrosis. Since we know that this trait is coded for by a recessive allele, recessive alleles are only expressed if only the recessive alleles are present. If a dominant allele is present, i.e. uppercase F, then that allele will not be expressed. Here we've got a dominant normal allele and a recessive suffering cystic fibrosis allele. So only the dominant one is expressed. This individual would be normal. They would not suffer from cystic fibrosis. So let's write that in here. It doesn't ask us for it in the question, but it will probably help us anyway. Big F, small f, codes for a person that is normal, does not suffer from cystic fibrosis. We've got big F, small f again, same result. This individual right here has two recessive alleles and therefore, unfortunately, suffers from cystic fibrosis. Suffers. And again, exactly the same result here. Suffers. So here we've got from these particular parents, in terms of probability, the, the chances of what their offspring will inherit, there is a two normal to two suffering probability, two to two. So the probability of a child suffering cystic fibrosis is two to two, or one to one, or 50%. Now, there are a few things we could do wrong here. Notice in these diagrams, people try to do every possible combination of these gametes that there could be. Why don't we, for example, combine this particular pair of gametes? Well, think logically about what this means in terms of the parents. These are both from one parent. These are both from another parent. So if this here represents the mother, this here represents the father. If we were to combine these two gametes, that would suggest that this egg is, I don't know, fertilized by this egg. Well, of course, that doesn't make any sense. We can only combine an egg cell with a sperm cell. And here we've got every possible combination of these two egg cells fertilized by these two sperm cells. Now let's quickly check how we might get marked for this. In some questions, you'll get marks for the parent genotypes. Here they're already given in the question, so you won't get a tick for them. But right here, we've got all of the parents' gametes uh, stated. So there you'll get your mark there. We've got all of the possible offspring genotypes there. There's a tick right there. And the final part of the question, we're looking for a probability, and we've determined that right there is 50%. There's another tick, and so there is three marks. Now that question wasn't necessarily an easy one, but the answer section was fairly well structured, which gives you a bit of an idea of the direction you should take it. Let's look at another question that's a little bit more open-ended and maybe a little bit more challenging. Okay, so the question reads, a species of plant has either white or yellow flowers determined by a single gene. The yellow trait is recessive to white. Use a genetic diagram to determine the phenotypic ratio of the first generation when two heterozygous plants are crossed. Use uppercase A and lowercase a to represent the alleles. Okay, so what's the question asking for? Right here, determine the phenotypic ratio when these two are crossed. The question is asking for a phenotypic ratio. 
So the phenotype is the physical expression of the genes. So in this case, we've got this single gene that determines having white or yellow flowers. White or yellow flowers is the phenotype. So let's start uh, to tackle the question by writing down which trait is coded for by which allele. So we've got symbols A and uppercase A and lowercase A. And we know that the yellow trait is recessive. We know that we always use the lowercase to represent the recessive one. So yellow is represented by lowercase a. And of course, white, the dominant one, is represented by uppercase a. Now, what are we crossing uh, in this particular case? It says we've got two heterozygous plants. Heterozygous means having two different alleles for a gene. Now let's look at the genotypes to show you what I mean. So for this particular species of plant, we could have genotype big A, big A. We could have big A and small A, a combination of the two. We might think we could have small A and big A, but that's exactly the same thing as this. It doesn't matter which way around we write them. So I won't bother writing that. The third possibility is small A and small A. So what do these genotypes actually mean? Well, here we've got two alleles both coding for the white trait. So of course, the phenotype of an individual with this genotype would be white, white flowers. Here, this one's got two alleles both coding for the recessive yellow trait. And so an individual with this genotype would be yellow. It would have a yellow phenotype. Now remember here in this case, where we have two different alleles, we've got the recessive one here, the dominant one here. If we have a dominant and a recessive one, only the dominant is expressed. In that case, that's here, the uppercase A. So this individual with this genotype would have white flowers. Now look at these possible genotypes here and the phenotypes they code for. This is two of the same allele. This is two of the same allele. This one right here is two different alleles for that gene. So this particular individual is heterozygous for this trait, for the trait of flower color. These ones, this one here and this one here, both having the same alleles for the gene, we would describe these as homozygous. But we know in this question that we've got two heterozygous plants. So let's next write down that parent genotypes. If they're both heterozygous, that means we are crossing a parent with big A, small A, with a parent with big A, small A. So now this tells us um, what is the, the problem that we've been presented with that we need to try and solve. Next, let's write down the gametes. The possible gametes that each individual could pass on is either one of these. So this individual could pass on this gamete or a gamete with this allele. This individual could pass on a gamete with this allele or with this allele. All right, and now we'll put the, all of this into a genetic diagram to try and find out what is the ratio of phenotypes that could be produced within the offspring. I'm going to use a Punnett square for this one, and it looks like this. And what I have to do here and here, and here and here, is put in the parent gametes, the possible alleles that they could provide in their gametes. So this parent here could provide this gamete, or this one here. This parent could provide this gamete with that particular allele, or a gamete with this particular allele. And now what we have to do is look at all of the possible combinations. If this parent provides this allele and this parent provides this allele, we show that when they combine right here, big A, big A. We could find that this parent provides this allele and this parent provides this allele, big A, small A. And we continue on like that. Notice in this case, 
I wrote big A small A rather than small A big A. It's just convention that we write the dominant allele first. It's not that important. And so here I've got all of the possible genotypes within the offspring from a cross of these two parents. Now, what I'd like to do next is write down the phenotypes for each of these genotypes just to help clarify my thinking. So big A, big A, we've already done all of that work right there. We know that that will provide a white phenotype. We've got two instances of big A, small A. We already know that that will provide a white phenotype. And a one that contains only the two recessive yellow alleles, of course, that's going to produce an individual with the yellow flowers, with the yellow phenotype. All right, so that's most of the hard work done, but some people stop there and leave it as it is. But remember, the question is asking us to present the phenotypic ratio. So what do we have? Well, the ratio kind of jumps out at us for three white, there is one yellow, so the ratio is three to one. But don't make the mistake of just writing three to one in your final answer. This is looking for a phenotypic ratio. So we have to write the phenotypes. So let's write that in as our final answer. Phenotypic ratio, and that is three white to one yellow. So I've got the ratio, three to one, and I've got the phenotypes, and that's what makes this a phenotypic ratio. So let's have a quick look at how we might get our marks for that. I think I would be inclined to give a mark for stating which allele, which symbol represents which allele, so I'd give that there. We've then got the parent genotypes, so we've interpreted the question, the information about them being heterozygous, and shown that we understand what that means. Then we've put all of this into a um, genetic diagram, which shows us what the alleles are that can be provided. So either here or within the genetic diagram, I think I'd be inclined to give a mark for showing what the alleles are. And then of course, the final part of the question is looking for, uh, the, or the final part of our answer, of course, is demonstrating our phenotypic ratio, which is clearly stated right there. So we get our four marks out of four for that. If you want to level up your understanding of genetics, the next thing you should learn about is how we can take a gene from one organism and insert it into another organism like bacteria or plants so that those organisms can present a characteristic that might be useful to us. That is genetic modification and it's all presented in this next video.